do you guys know about one of the most significant conflicts in English history? Yes, the one that even Game of Thrones took inspiration from. Well, we are talking about the War of Roses. This was a series of bloody civil wars fought between the House of Lancaster and the House of York over the English throne. The war was fought from 1455 to 1485 as both houses were members of the Royal Plantagenet family. The war earned its name as symbols of both houses were roses, a white rose for the Yorks and the red rose for the Lancaster. So let us take a look at the events of this bloody conflict. In 1422, Henry VI succeeded his father Henry V and became the King of England at just nine months old. Henry V is perhaps the most renowned king in English history. He led two successful invasions in France and led his troops to victory at the 1415 Battle of Agincourt and eventually secured full control of the French throne. Due to his father's conquests, Henry VI became the disputed king of France. In 1445, he married Margaret of Anjou, a noble and strong-willed Frenchwoman whose ambition and political savvy overshadowed her husband's. Unlike his father, Henry VI wasn't an efficient ruler, and all was not well in his court. He had little interest in politics and was a very weak ruler. This weak-willed administration incited rampant lawlessness throughout his kingdom and opened the door for power-hungry nobles and kingmakers to plot behind his back. His lack of leadership skills and insight led him to lose most of his holdings in France. This added to the corruption and mismanagement of power in England, in addition to the heavy taxation, caused frustrated property owners and peasants to rise up against the king in Kent in 1450. Jack Cade led these so-called rebels, and they marched to London and presented their demands to Henry. This list of demands was known as the Complaint of the Poor Common of Kent. Henry never officially agreed to Cade's demands, one of which was to recall Richard, Duke of York, from Ireland back to England. Richard of York was the great-grandson of King Edward III, and his arrival back in London would present a strong competing claim on the English throne. There were a few skirmishes, Henry squashed Cade's rebellion and parted almost all of the rebels except Jack Cade. He later died of an injury he sustained during his arrest. Henry, who wasn't known for his good decisions, believed that Richard of York was behind this rebellion. This would later set the stage for the 30 years long series of battles involving three generations of the competing families. By 1452, Richard of York returned to England and decided that his mission in life was to rid Henry's court of his corrupt advisors. Of particular interest to him was Edmund Beaufort, the Duke of Somerset. He raised a large army and marched on London, declaring fealty to Henry while also compelling him to remove Somerset from his post. However, Somerset somehow managed to cling on to his seat until King Henry succumbed to his first bout of madness in 1454. He was left virtually catatonic and could no longer rule. During his illness, Richard became the Lord Protector of England and imprisoned Somerset in the Tower of London. It was a bitter victory, as soon after Queen Margaret gave birth to Henry's only son, Edward of Lancaster. This weakened Richard's claim on the throne. In February 1455, King Henry recovered from his spell of madness as quickly as he had fallen prey to it. He immediately sent Richard and his ministers away and reinstated Somerset. On May 22, 1445, Richard of York aligned himself with Richard Neville, Earl of Warwick, and marched with a small force towards London. On his way, he was met by King Henry at St. Albans, leading a similarly small force. Negotiations began as Richard demanded the removal of corrupt ministers, but the king wasn't to be moved, and soon both sides began to fight. The battle was short but vicious and resulted in a York victory. Somerset and Northumberland were killed while Henry was injured when an arrow hit his neck. He seemingly suffered another episode of madness and was taken prisoner. 
Richard once again became Lord Protector, and Queen Margaret and her young son, fearful for their lives, went into exile. Both sides were shaken by the fact that the situation had become so dire that they had to fight each other. As each party tried to reconcile with the other, Richard continued to maintain his shaky hold on England. However, Margaret continued to work in the shadows. Her efforts were aimed at restoring her husband to the throne and upholding her son's rightful place as heir. Richard became aware of the conspiracies around him and called on Lord Salisbury and gave him command of his army. Meanwhile in London, one of Richard's allies, Warwick, was getting more and more popular with the people. The Lancaster army led by Lord Audley decided to ambush the oncoming York forces at Bloor Heath. However, some scouts discovered the ruse and warned Salisbury of the trap. Soon, both forces began to attack each other. The York army was outnumbered by the Lancastrian forces, but being a good strategist, Salisbury was able to turn the tide of the battle, and in the ensuing conflict, Lord Otley was killed. With his death, the Lancastrian forces started to falter until they were forced to flee. Around 1,000 Yorkists lost their lives, while 2,000 Lancastrian soldiers were killed. Following this confrontation, both sides began to collect their forces. Both armies once again faced each other at the Battle of Ludford Bridge. Warwick's contingent under the leadership of Andrew Trello defected and joined the Lancastrian army. Seeing this, the Yorkist leaders fled. Richard returned to Ireland, and his eldest son Salisbury and Warwick fled to Calais. Once again, Henry was in total control, and the Yorkist leaders were attained as traitors. In June 1460, Warwick, Salisbury, and Edward, son of Richard, once again crossed the English Channel and set themselves up in Kent and London, where they enjoyed a lot of support. Once again, the two sides gathered their armies, and the two armies faced each other in the Battle of Northampton. Victory looked unlikely for the Yorkists. However, unbeknownst to Henry, one of his commanders was a turncoat and allowed Warwick's men access to the Kingsmen. The Lancastrian army was routed, and once again, Henry was found alone in his tent, having suffered another fit of madness. With this victory, Richard of York tried to press his claim to the throne, but even loyalists like Salisbury and Warwick were against him. So instead of becoming the king immediately, Richard proclaimed himself and his heirs as Henry's successors. Henry agreed as long as he'd retain the crown until his death. The agreement was passed by the English Parliament and was called the Act of Accord. However, far away from the capital, Queen Margaret would have none of this compromise and raised another army to rise against the Yorks. She asked the Scottish for support and was given an army on the condition that the town of Berwick would be given to Scotland. Meanwhile, Richard set out with his forces to defeat Margaret's army and settle the matter of succession once and for all. The two armies clashed at Wakefield Green near Sandal Castle. The battle was a complete Lancastrian victory. Richard of York was killed in battle, and Salisbury and York's 17-year-old son were captured and executed. Their severed heads were put on display, with Richard's wearing a paper crown soon after Margaret marched with her forces south. Richard was succeeded by his son Edward, Earl of March. He continued his father's campaign against the Lancastrians. In the middle of winter 1461, his forces defeated the Lancastrians at the Battle of Mortimer's Cross. After defeat, Margaret's army was forced to support itself by looting towns in the south of England. Warwick used this to spread propaganda, and soon the town of Coventry changed sides and began to support the Yorkist forces. Once again, the two forces clashed at the Second Battle of St. Albans, and the Yorkists were crushed by Margaret's army and King Henry was rescued as the enemy forces fled. Despite the defeat, Edward continued on his campaign. Margaret's army was denied entry into London, and she was forced to order a retreat. At the same time, Edward and Warwick 
found much support and sympathy with the Londoners. Edward delayed his coronation and king and set out with an army to face the Lancastrian forces at Toton. The Battle of Toton was the biggest battle of the War of Roses. Around 40,000 to 60,000 men took part in this battle, with 28,000 losing their lives in the conflict. This was the greatest number of casualties on English soil in a single day. The battle resulted in a decisive York victory, as most of the Lancastrian leaders were killed. King Henry, Margaret, and their son were forced to flee to Scotland, leaving Edward as King of England. Edward IV may have gained the throne, but he underestimated the deposed Queen Margaret's stealth and ambition. Margaret had been forced to flee to France as King Henry was captured for a third time by York forces. He was imprisoned in the Tower of London while Edward's forces continued to root out Lancastrian supporters. In the meantime, Warwick had become one of the greatest landowners in England. With the end of the conflict, his power had increased manyfold. He was convinced of the need for an alliance with the French and had been negotiating a match between Edward and a French bride. However, Edward ended up marrying Elizabeth Woodville, a Lancastrian widow. This caused much embarrassment for Warwick. Soon, many of Elizabeth's family members were given a place in the royal court, and Warwick's family was ignored, even to the extent that Edward didn't allow his brothers to marry Warwick's daughters. By 1469, Warwick allied himself with Edward's jealous brother George and raised an army, defeating the Kingsmen at the Battle of Edgecote. Edward was captured but soon released. After the continued conflict, Edward was ousted, and Henry was restored to the throne in October 1470. Edward went into hiding but wasn't idle. He gathered an army and once again started his campaign. He won the Battle of Barnet and the Battle of Tewkesbury. At Tewkesbury, Henry and Margaret's only son was killed, and the royal family was captured and imprisoned in the Tower of London. The throne of England reverted back to Edward. On May 21, 1471, King Henry VI died. Some historians believe that Edward had him murdered. Margaret was released soon after, and she was sent back to France, where she died in 1482. King Edward IV died in 1483 and was succeeded by his young son, Edward V. Richard III, the ambitious brother of Edward IV, who became the Lord Protector, but he plotted to have Edward V and his young son declared illegitimate. He was successful in carrying out his plot and was crowned in July 1483. To remove threats to his throne, he had his nephews held in the Tower of London, supposedly for their own protection. When both boys, now called the princes in the tower, vanished, the people accused Richard of having them murdered, and he quickly lost the support of the people. As Richard's situation grew ever precarious, the Lancastrian Henry Tudor, with the help of the French and many nobles, staked his claim to the crown. He met Richard on the battlefield at Bosworth on August 22, 1485. After a valiant fight, Richard was slain supposedly by a major Welsh landowner, Rysel Thomas, with a blow to the head from a poleaxe. Legend has it that the crown was placed on Henry's head at the very spot where Richard fell. Henry was declared King Henry VII. After his official coronation, Henry married Elizabeth of York and thus reconciled the long-feuding Lancaster and York houses. This union ended the War of the Roses and gave rise to the Tudor dynasty. Henry even combined the rival symbols of the Red House of Lancaster and the White Rose of York into the new emblem of the Red and White Tudor Rose. This effectively marked the end of the bloody War of the Roses. So that's about all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications about our future videos. See you all next time. Adios.